G'day YouTubers, it's Spanner Man again here. Uh, I've had a request to explain something, so uh, I'll try and do my best and explain this. Somebody asked me uh, on YouTube, uh, would they be able to explain to me where is 10 degrees tilt used for? So I'll tell you what it, where you use 10 de degrees tilt, but I'll tell you why. 10 degrees tilt is used on full chisel. It's not used on semi chisel, it's not required. Why is it required on full chisel? Well, to cut a long story short, full chisel has an extremely sharp point on it. So this tooth here represents a full chisel. As you can see, it's got a fairly sharp point on it. Whereas uh, we've got another tooth here that's a semi-chisel. And that semi-chisel tooth only, it's got a radius on it, more of a radius than a 90 degree square edge. So that's the radius that you see on a uh, semi chisel whereas you look at a full chisel very very pointy okay what's the difference and where are, are they used for we'll just answer that question a full chisel is more aggressive between 10 and 15 percent and it's mainly used on uh, you know, soft to hardwood uh, because it comes to a very very sharp point that point is easily damaged and if that point gets damaged it won't pierce the timber very good and it'll be virtually all over so that'll be that'll make it blunt now the fastest or or the most aggressive and we won't cover that uh tooth out there is called square file uh, it's it's a little bit different uh it looks like a full chisel but the geometry is a little bit different, but we're just going to talk about full chisel and semi chisel. Now, the 10 degree downward tilt, what does it do? What it actually does is change the geometry of the tooth. Because if you file dead flat, so yeah, if you file dead flat, as opposed to filing down 10%, uh, it can make a big difference in some hardwoods. Not so much on uh, really softwoods. So what we've got here, that is 10 degrees downward tilt. So if this part, the black part of the handle is horizontal, this is how you would hold your file. That's 10 degrees, I've measured it. So that's, that's your 10 degree downward tilt. What does it do? Well, let's try and show you as best as possible, then we'll sort of... Uh, have a bit of a, a visual look at 10 degree downward tilt. So I'll try and get this at the right angle. If if that's aligned fairly parallel with the tooth, if we drop the file down 10 degrees, you'll notice there's a gap at the back of the tooth. So we'll do it this way. Drop 10 degrees you can see that gap. That's the gap. So if we proceed to file at 10 degree downward tilt, we're going to start to take off the front of this tooth until it all lines up. We'll do it one more time, drop 10 degrees. If we start to file here, we're going to have to file off the front of the tooth. The geometry will change. Also what will happen, and you'll be able to see this, there's 90 degrees. So most chains, or the, not most chains, the uh, semi-chisel is filed flat. 10 degrees downward tilt is about, about that much. So that's your 10 degrees. So if that's, that's your 10 degrees there. That's your slope. Okay. Now, I've got some chain links here from, from a roller chain. I just sort of knocked them out. And what I've done here... It is a full chisel chain and I've filed at 90 degrees and I've filed at 10 degrees downward tilt. And I've marked a dot on both. The other on the other side there's there's two dots. And we're gonna zoom in and before I tell you uh, why you file at 10 degrees, we'll see if you can pick which one is filed at 10 degrees for the people out there that may have a little bit of knowledge. So we'll zoom in. Now there's a profile of there, you can see that shape quite easily. So have a look at that. Then we'll turn this over. It's going in the other direction, but that doesn't matter. 
So there's that there. We'll hop, tilt it a different angle maybe. To the trained eye, it stands out. It's fairly obvious. We'll just do it again for those people there that are not too sure that want to have another look. So that's the one dot. That's the two dots. Okay, which is the full chisel? Full chisel is that one with the two dots, uh, five to 10 degrees downward uh, slope. Why? What, what's the difference? Well, for the people that can't see it, you'll notice that it doesn't have much of a hook on it. It's, it, it's, it comes, it follows the file, but at a, a different profile. Whereas when you're at 90 degrees like that, like this one here, you can see that hook, that C shape, that hook. Now, if you get too much hook, especially on a full chisel, what that will actually mean, I'm going to point that is that this leading edge, especially when we come to the point right here, if it gets a lot of pressure on it, it can tend to bend, especially in hardwoods. So it's not as strong. There's not as much metal underneath supporting it. Whereas we turn over and we have a look at the one that was filed down at 10 degree slope, there's more metal under here that supports the point. So it's the point of the tooth that's most important. So where we were before, if you have a look at that point, it's very, very easy to damage it. Very, very easy. And you can see that this point here strikes the timber. So this is the first part that hits the timber. So it doesn't take much to blunten it and the moment it be becomes blunt you won't be cutting timber whereas you look at the the semi chisel the semi chisel is a much much more got a radius on it so to blunten the semi chisel fairly quickly you have to blunten all this right this is the first part that touches the timber this radius here so as you can see virtually from there to there has to become blunt so it's much more forgiving if you hit a little bit of dirt you hit a little bit of dirt with this that pinpoint that's that sharp that it'll become blunt and you won't cut now i don't know whether if i can get a better shot of this we may be able to get a better shot so you can see that that's the uh that doesn't have the 10 degree downward slope. You can see that comes to a fairly, look at that sharp point. Whereas we turn it over, and we look at the metal that's underneath, it's, it supports that. So this metal, it's directly underneath. It's, it's still quite strong on this leading edge here, but when we get right over to the very point, if we've got too much of a hook here, it's very, very easy to damage it. So that is what 10 degrees downward tilt will do. And again, that's what 10 degrees downward tilt looks like. That's what it looks like. So this bottom trailing edge, if I hold this parallel as, as, as I can to the camera, this is your 10 degrees downward. The only other thing that it does do that also I've, I've heard, but I don't know whether it's 100% true, is that when we tilt down 10 degrees, that means that this gullet part here also it slopes down this way some people say that it aids in uh, 
eject in the chips out much more efficiently. Whether or not that's 100% correct, look, I don't know. But as you can see with this tooth here, it's the same thing. You don't have a huge hook on it. The moment you increase that hook, uh, yes, it, it, it's very, very easy to uh, blunt in it. Look, I hope that helps. That's sort of gone for over 10 minutes. I wanted to explain that as best as I possibly could. Uh, most people probably use semi-chisel. For all those people that are thinking of getting full chisel, I generally use full chisel 90% of the time because it cuts better. Now, if I'm out in the field, I'm not going to get my files out and I'm not going to file it because it will take me about one and a half to two minutes to uh, swap over to another chain. And when I get home and I've got time, then I'll just take me time and file them or grind them up. Now, the only other thing, when we talk about an electric grinder, I've got electric grinders, quite a few of them, and I've got one of the uh, Oregon type ones, Tecomec, Jolly uh, Evo, and also the older type Oregon one where that you can adjust the 10 degree tilt. Uh, I find that the grinders are much, much more accurate than the file. Now, there's going to be people out there that are going to disagree with me. But let me say that some people are experts with a file. Uh, they are gifted. Most people are, they may be a professional chainsaw person, but they not, may not be a professional person with a file. So just because you're a professional person that cuts timber down doesn't mean you're a professional at sharpening uh, the tooth and with a file. But some people are gifted with a file and they can file perfectly. Most of us can't. Most of us file good enough that gets the job done. And the other thing is, even if your filing is not 100%, even if it's, say, 80%, well, you've got to resharpen again you know, an hour or so later, so even if you don't get it perfect uh, the first time, uh, you, you have to resharpen it. Look, I hope this video helps. It tells you the difference between full chisel and semi-chisel. Uh, it's up to you whether uh, you want to use a full chisel, but just remember if you do, uh, the downward tilt. There are people that do the downward tilt on the semi-chisel. Semi it's not really going to do one bit whatsoever. The only other thing that I would like to say is that still don't recommend downward tilt on their full chisel. I don't know why. They used to many years ago. They've changed from that without... A, I don't know why, but there must be some reason, but... I don't know, so somebody out there may know the reason as to why they change, but look, it's better if you give it a bit of tilt, 10 degrees, it'll change the geometry of the front, it'll make the full chisel so that it's not as pointy like a needle, because if you, you could see in the video, you could see in the video when I showed you the difference between the hook and the one it wasn't as bad, so there's a big increase in the hook if you don't downward tilt. Look, you can get away with it, right? Uh, if you're cutting medium timber and you're just taking it easy, you won't cause any damage to the uh, the uh, chain where, where it comes to that real sharp point. But if you get into some really hard timber and you've got a, a, a bit of a hook on here, you're liable to bend the front of this. It's liable to get damaged very, very quickly. And the moment that it bends a little bit, if it bends over a little bit, it won't cut. Anyway, look, I hope this helps. Uh, give us a thumbs up or give us some comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.